Since the town and village have separate zoning laws, it is recommended that separate committees be formed, one for the town and one for the village. <coughs> However, because land use in one place influences the other, the two committees should be aware of each other's work and coordinate it to be consistent with this plan. The zoning update committee should have diverse representatives from different parts of the community, as well as at least one planning board and one zoning board of appeals member. <coughs> This effort will need assistance from or require the services of a planning consultant as well as an attorney. Um, 
It is our hope to uh, form the zoning board of the view uh, as soon as we can to get that underway. And uh, we, I wanted to give notice that any individuals who have an interest in that, it's fairly technical. So people who've had some experience with that obviously would be welcome. But we will also be putting that on the website um, and hope to get that constituted um, in the near future. Uh, there are revised uh, town board committees, uh, which I won't go into, but since George joined the board, we were able to reorganize the committees, and the, uh, that will be on the website. <coughs> uh, with that, I'd like to ask if we have a report from the police. Good evening. How are you doing? My mom in the books. All right. Um, let's see, 20 were in the village and seven were in the town. And there was one arrest in the village and one arrest in the town. And compared with last year? Compared with last year, there was a total of 30, uh, 38, and there was five um, arrests in the village and one in the town. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty significantly close close less yes. this year than it was. A little bit less, but. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anybody have any questions? All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Where's Bob? Bob? Yeah. You want to <coughs> fill us in on how things are at the highway garage? Everything's going very well. You like the new storage building? Yes, very much so. It's working out well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, we've been uh, cutting brush and patching with cold mix and working on equipment in between snow and ice events. Mm -hmm. Keeping us busy. We're, we have had a fairly mild winter, I guess, overall. So far. Overall, yeah. December was a little busy. January was definitely uh, below average. Right. So we have good stocks of sand and salt. We do. We're in good shape. Right. And the, the trucks are in good shape. Trucks are doing okay. We had one broken leaf string on one of the plow trucks, but uh, that's pretty uh, normal as the age that happens. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Gives Catherine Johnson here. She is. Thank you. Pointed to a new five-year term, so the FTC will be filling a full five-year term. Uh, I ask that you advertise as soon as possible because our grievance day is coming up in May, and the training is usually at the end of April, so we have a short window to, to fill the positions and the biggest training, training in time. To qualify for a bar appointment, um, the law states only that the person is knowledgeable in property values, is 18 years or older, a U.S. citizen, and a resident of the town. Obviously, the first thing is most important, so I hope you find someone that is well-versed uh, in not just knowing the town, but knowing a little bit about uh, property value. Mm -hmm. uh, we will post that on the website excellent. as soon as possible. Excellent. Uh, and then I, I also want to uh, report to everyone that exemptions, uh, all new and renewal exemption deadline is, as always, March 1st. Fortunately, this year it falls on the weekend, so it's extended to March 2nd. Um, but all exemptions that are uh, income-based are must be renewed annually. Um, Nonprofit, low-income seniors, uh, agricultural exemptions. Um, in the past, also the enhanced star exemption, but as you remember last year, the state took over the administration of that exemption, so no one must be permitted to. Uh, we send out all uh, renewal applications to um, uh, holders of those exemptions for renewal. And we recently, today we sent out reminders to seniors and nonprofits. So hopefully everybody gets things in on time. Uh, the last week of the month I will have extended hours for late comers. 
uh, Tuesday and Friday of that week since our office is only open to the public on Wednesdays and Thursdays normally. And then finally, on March 1st, also another big day is taxable status date. That's the date at which um, all the data of the property that I've collected is going to, what I will be using to make assessments for this coming roll year. So I uh, always ask that uh, people check their property data, make sure that I have the correct information about the property um, before I put out new values. And that's it for now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have received from, from the clerk, the planning zone, the building department uh, reports by email. Um, and that uh, it completes the town clerk report. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we've revised the committees, but there are no committee reports uh, at this point. Um, <clears throat> moving into the meet, uh, meeting, we have, um, I want to make a report on our insurance coverage, um, we have received uh, two quotes for our, our liability insurance going forward. Uh, one, one is for $35,652, one is for $32,243. Uh, the good news is that that is lower, the lower of those two bids is lower than our insurance premium for this year, which is unusual and uh, very happy. There are a couple of details we're going to, we're still looking at on those before I come back to the board with a recommendation that we accept uh, that one, the lower one. That will be done at our next, uh, at our next meeting. Um, <clears throat> I have a resolution which has been distributed to the board uh, approving the procurement blanket undertaking for town officials and other officers and employees pursuant to public officers law 11 parens 2. This is a requirement of uh, when there's a chair there or any, there are quite a few, make yourself okay. at home. Um, this is a, um, this is a port, this is an attachment of the, or part, <coughs> excuse me, of the insurance policy that covers uh, all the elected officials and uh, other officials of the town and uh, indemnifies them and the town from, from uh, misbehavior and wrongdoing. Anyway, it is uh, something which uh, is part of our insurance coverage. The state requires that you pass a resolution stating that you have this coverage. Uh, I've distributed the resolution to the board, and um, I think we can wait we, reading it, but we do need to a roll call vote. Absolutely. Okay. Supervisor Cannon? Uh, well, I guess I'm making oh, a motion that we approve mm -hmm. this uh, procurement of a blank blanket undertaking. So we need a second. Can we go with And then a second? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Supervisor Cannon? Aye. Um, Councilman uh, McKay? Aye. Councilwoman Morrison? Aye. Councilman Midwood? Aye. Councilman Fidel? Aye. We are moving forward on the new highway garage. As I think many people have seen, uh, the storage building, uh, which was completed last year, is up and is being used. Uh, so far, I think it's working very well. It has four bays in it. One of them is allocated to the village, and they have been uh, using that bay, and we've been using the others. Uh, our program for the highway garage is to complete a, uh, a fuel, uh, fuel storage and distribution uh, part of the, of the storage building and to construct a sand and salt building, uh, which will be in the back of the site and which will enable us to move uh, the sand and salt off of South Center Street. Um, I have, would like a motion to authorize uh, CPL, uh, architects, engineers, and planners to place the highway department sand salt building project out to competitive bid in accordance with town <coughs> and Dutchess County Central Services Department requirements, pending approval of the Dutchess County Planning Department. 
there will be public notification giving notice to bidders. <coughs> All bidder, bids will be open to the town hall at a date and time that will be coordinated with the town clerk. Uh, such bid documents and proposed contract documents will be available for public inspection. Um, so if I could have a motion to authorize uh, our engineers to uh, issue that bid. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Aye. Thank you. Um, one of the things we are going to need at uh, our location is a well, which will service the actual highway garage when it is built next year. Um, the well will be in the very back of the site, and we need to uh, put that in before we put the sand and salt building up because it will be harder to get in there afterwards. Uh, we have received four written quotations from well drilling contractors to drill a new well at the new highway garage facility. Um, I would like a motion to award the well construction work to the apparent low bidder Hyatt Pump Service in the estimated amount of $7,200. I need a motion. Someone. Lena, you have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, a copy of the written quotations for that will be kept on record in the town clerk's office. I mentioned that there will be a uh, fuel storage uh, uh, tanks which will be installed uh, at the eastern end of the storage building. There is actually concrete uh, uh, structure there which will accommodate them, which is already there. Um, after advertising for bids for the installation of the fuel stor storage dispensing and management systems for the facility, the town only received a single bid that was opened and recorded. Since only one bid was received and that bid was over the original anticipated construction budget, um, I would suggest to the town board that we reject all bids and authorize CPL architects, engineers, and planners to place the fuel storage, fuel management project out to rebid. So I'd like to have a motion to, to do that. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No. <clears throat> okay. Ahead of schedule here. Um, we are going to go into a public hearing on the new sign law, and uh, by the time we get through introducing it, we will probably be at 720 or pretty close to it. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to give a little background on the law. <coughs> Section 180-55 of the Town Zoning Code was amended in 2009. It was drafted by a committee appointed by former Supervisor Dave Sherman. The law was designed to provide some order and rationale to the placement of signs in the town. Its purpose was to regulate where signs are placed, how big they are, what they're made of, how many of them, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> recently, it came to the town's attention that our sign <coughs> law did not conform in all respects to a recent ruling of the U.S. Supreme Court. The court basically said that sign laws must be content neutral and cannot discriminate on the basis of sign content. In general, sign restrictions must apply equally to all property owners. So former supervisor George Kay asked Young Arneson to head up a committee to look at the town's regulation first of solar facilities and then of the sign law. Uh, this committee worked all of last year with meetings that were posted on the town's website and open to the public. Their work has resulted in a new solar law, which the town board adopted last year, and in this revised sign law, which we're having a hearing on tonight. Uh, the changes to the sign law, for the most part, attempt to ensure that the Northeast sign law is content and speaker neutral. 
In addition, the committee made a few technical changes to the law, such as providing a proper definition for determining the size of a sign and reorganizing the law to put administration and enforcement in one place. <coughs> the committee was not asked to and did not consider any substantive issues, such as sign size, type of sign, location, and so on. As provided in the comprehensive plan, those issues will be considered by Zoning Review Commission, which I talked about earlier, appointed by the town board in the context of the entire town. The 2009 amendments to the code prohibited LED signs in all of the town's zoning districts. The proposed revisions to the sign code have left those prohibitions intact, since the committee had no direction to propose substantive changes to the sign law. We are also well aware of the suggestions which were presented to the board at our last meeting by American Legion Post 178. Their concerns relate to an LED lit sign which they purchased and installed, but which our zoning enforcement officer and zoning board of appeals found does not conform to the current sign law. At this point, we welcome the public's input on this proposed sign law. The board looks forward to listening to the comments and to having time after tonight's meeting to reflect on them and to decide how best to move forward. We have people here who would like to speak in person, and we've also received a number of written comments which people have asked to have read into the record of the hearing. Uh, out of respect to the people who have taken the time to show up and speak to us, We'll take our in-person comments first, and then I will ask our town clerk to read those written comments that we've received, which were um, asked to be read into the record. We would ask uh, those of you who would like to speak to come to the podium so that uh, they can be seen and by the camera, because we're, uh, we're recording this as we record our town board meetings, um, and to give us their name and address and to limit their comments to three minutes. Uh, I, will ask the, um, I will ask the clerk to advise me when a speaker has reached three minute mark. Uh, I'd also add, like to ask if speakers would just address the board uh, and not other speakers or members of the audience. With that, I'd like to ask for a motion to open our hearing. So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> so, um, if there are people who would like to address the board, uh, there's the podium. Uh, if you would be kind enough to give us your name and, and address, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Joanne Scasso, Country Gardeners Floors, and it's Valentine's Day, so I'm really busy. <laughs> so, really, thanks for letting me go first. So, I've been a business person in this town for 34 years. This neon sign thing has come up for 34 years. When I first came to town, I wanted a neon sign. Quickly realized that that was a stupid idea, because I loved Millerton. But it is not a stupid idea when it comes to our fire department and our American Legion. I have been one of those people that when it's a snowstorm, um, an emergency, um, any of those things that any of our elderly people, which any one of us could be there at that time that doesn't have power, that doesn't have heat, that needs their assistance, which I see, how many of you? And I just walked in, because I ran up here, because I was like, oh my God, it's 7.20. But it's really important to me as a business person, and I understand the neon sign part, but that did not bother me driving by. And I thought, and every time I see the one at the firehouse, I think, that's perfectly okay with me as a business person because I have to look at the Chinese one next to me every day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So if we want to get rid of a neon sign, let's get rid of the Chinese, let's get rid of the neon sign that are in town, not American Legion and the fire company. These are people that are volunteers, which I happen to be one of them too. 
that when we turn around and we start thinking about our elderly and get where we give blood and where we, um, we're a small community. If there's money out there that a grant or something that we might not get because of a neon sign, I think that we can make an exception for a couple places in our small little village and town that everyone, I can't imagine how many people are actually against two signs in this town that are a public service. So I have to go back to work, but thanks for letting me go first. Thank you. I'm sure we must have somebody else who wants to say something for us. I guess. I wasn't going to, but uh, I will. Mary Lynn Calajaris, I live on Boston Corners Road. And I don't think you can make an exception for just two. Is the, am I correct about that, Mr. Lawyer? I think if you allow two, you're going to have to allow the whole, that whole district from Cumberland Farm to the Connecticut border um, to have signs as well. If someone else asks, I don't think you can say, okay, we can let, I'd love to be able to, but we can't. And since we have accepted the Greenway Compact, which says for two reasons you shouldn't have LA, uh, these LED signs. One is the safety reasons, and that sign is on a curve and on a major um, road. If someone dies there, um, that would be a problem. And the other reason the Greenway Compact says we shouldn't have these kinds of signs is because it changes the nature of the town. So, and it's in our code. Our code says that we accept the Greenway Compact. So, um, I, I understand what's being said about the American Legion, but we, I don't think we can, as a town, legally say and make exceptions because we will. We could have a district that's full of LED sites. I'm Dan Sternberg from Boston Corner, town of Northeast. I have uh, two brief points to make. One. Uh, is a very pedantic point, and I apologize for that. I simply want to, I had spoken to the board and to the committee that produced this sign, uh, produced this proposed law, and uh, complained that the public had not been given a black line version of the law. This law was, was the entire law was reproduced, many changes were made, I'm quite sure that uh, our supervisor is being honest and saying they are they're not very significant, they're technical, with a couple of exceptions, but it is common practice and common courtesy uh, when you present a restated law to other people who have to consider it, and certainly to the public, uh, that a version of that law that shows all of the changes made be presented. And that's, in fact, that's the rule in the New York State Assembly, and it's the rule in the New York State Senate, and it's the rule of law in the in the U.S. Senate, and I think it really should have been the rule uh, followed by our town board. Uh, I think in future I would like to ask the board to make sure that that happens uh, as a matter of courtesy to the public who need to really understand what's going on. And I would suggest that most of the people sitting here don't actually know what the changes are in this law because they weren't really given a chance to look at that. So that's my pedantic lawyer's point. Um, to the <coughs> substance, and I actually intended to talk to the substance, but I will talk very briefly. <coughs> and um, I have, uh, I think, as much respect as anyone for the fire, both for the fire department and for the legion. Um, <coughs> and I don't think the, for me, the, the issue is not today whether uh, an LED sign would be appropriate 
um, in any of these in any of these two locations. But I realize we're really only addressing one. Um, but I do think that the substantive uh, this is not whether or not an exception is made for these two organizations. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the whether a uh, LED sign is good or bad or is great for the neighborhood or not. I think the point here is we do have an upcoming opportunity and necessity to review our entire zoning law and that this is a question that ought to be taken up in the context of the entire law and not piecemeal that. Uh, and so for me, we, we, there will be an opportunity and there should be an opportunity and there should be a consideration given to the needs of all of the various institutions and societies and businesses uh, throughout the town. Uh, but that really ought to be done as a whole in an integrated, intelligent fashion and not piecemeal. Thank you. I would like to remind our speakers if you would be kind enough to impress the board, uh, not the, of the audience or the speakers. Hi, Nick Burke and Mike Claire. I'm on Mitchell Mountain Road, down in Northeast. Can you speak up a little bit? So please. Yeah, so I agree exactly with what Dan said. Um, I'm here tonight because I'm a bit disturbed that, you know, I acknowledge there could be public safety issues. I acknowledge that the town has spent so much time to get the feedback from all the taxpayers of Northeast to fill out surveys of what we see our vision of our town to be, and we have a recently approved comprehensive plan. What disturbs me is we spend so much time on the fact that basically an organization has broken the law. And of all people, I have family members in the armed services. The armed services know how to follow the rules. And what shocks me is we're sort of backtracking, trying to find reason and why rules or laws were broken. Um, I don't support the waste of taxpayer money, use of lawyers, and all of our time to support this approach. If it had been brought ahead as a public safety issue, from this institution to say we feel it's important to have a sign, would you consider this in your upcoming decisions on zoning? I think that would have been fair. But at this point, to find a reason why it's okay to break the law, I, I just don't find it would be acceptable for anyone in this town um, recently or in the past. So that's why I'm here tonight. Um, I, I just don't feel that it, it's proper or the right way to approach uh, topics like this. So, thank you. Anyone else? My name is Molly Jenks, I'm on the Geek Hill Road. Um, before this ever even came into being an issue in Millerton, I noticed the sign driving through Pine Plains. And I thought it was really great. They put the names of their graduates, what colleges they're going to, all kinds of community announcements on that. And every time I would drive past, I thought how great, just a great way to communicate with the community, kind of small town, let everybody know what's going on. And, you know, it made me happy every time I drove past and saw that. The same thing with the fire department when they got theirs. You know, you knew what was going on in the town, not everyone gets the newspapers. And of course, I think it's important for all the community service things, you know, such as the shelters and things like that. But I ask that maybe you consider if there can be an exception in the Boulevard District or how that can be done. And it's my understanding that the Greenway Compact does not say you can't have an LED sign. It says it's up to the towns. Any more speakers? Good evening, members of the board. How are you? My name is Eric Breen, uh, Millerton Address, Town of Ancrum, uh, my whole life. Uh, 
So I say, as a member of the Military American Legion, aside from the fact that I live just across the line in the town of Bankrum, I still consider Millerton my home, my community, as I've had a Millerton address my whole life, and phone number and mailing address my whole life, and this is where I do most of my business. Uh, when members of the Legion heard a new sign being available, it was a unanimous vote to make the purchase. Um, we've already heard that we, we had a, an excellent opportunity to acquire this sign at an excellent price because of the Hudson uh, American Legion going out. Um, I don't believe anybody was thinking there might be a zoning uh, law against it. I know I wasn't. Um, so I, I live outside of town, um, different district, but uh, like I said, um, Upgrading from a couple of dilapidated, outdated signs to a modern, colorful, programmable sign um, could only be a plus to the community, right? Well, I guess not, according to some people. Um, location of the Military American Legion makes it easy to drive right past uh, without even paying attention to it at all. Um, like I said, all my life growing up here, hundreds of trips back and forth until about 2012, I didn't, think it, I didn't realize that it was the American Legion because my focus heading east, you get through that, get through the district past the shopping plaza, and you see what was Turney's Ford, Turney's Ford, um, then McLean Ford, now Northeast Ford. To, to, to view that, you know, the focus was the cars up ahead, and you know, the curve coming west from Connecticut. It's on that curve, uh, obstructed by all the growth out of the swamp. By the time you have a clear view of it, it's 90 degrees to the right. So who's, you know, no reason really to look that way. Um, my cousin invited me to the Christmas party 2012. I think that's when I realized that it was an American Legion. Um, so I, I don't see there was a. There was a fear expressed previously that we wanted to, don't want to turn it into uh, Las Vegas. Um, so I don't, I don't think many, if any other businesses, would incur the expense to purchase a sign like that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe so in, in that area. And actually the, the town actually starts, you know, CVS isn't in the town, the jewelers isn't in the town. The town starts with the, basically the shopping plaza. And, points east. Um, you know, as stated previously, membership and the executive committee, committee of the, the Legion is willing to make concessions as far as brightness, um, powering it down overnight, doing it. Um, so, I just figure it's not, it's not all bad. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Bob Jenks from Millerton, also with the American Legion. Thank you for uh, hearing our concerns about this today. Uh, let's revisit a little history here so everybody understands. This started six years ago, not just when the sign went up. And you asked John Merwin at the time, who was a town supervisor, who we spoke with at the sheltering meeting in Amenia about how do we notify residents of the town of Northeast in times of emergency what to do. Okay? He came back to us the following month at the repeat meeting because it went on for six months and said, we're not going to be able to get it done in the town. You'll have to do it because the Legion can get it done. And you asked John Rowan, each and every one of you, that's exactly what he said to me, okay, and to the other fellow members of the Legion there. So it started six years ago. It wasn't just something we thought up of. When the opportunity came, as the commander just said, we took that opportunity and seized on it and purchased the sign. The good that that sign will do. Anybody here know how many Amber Alerts there were last year? State of New York, across the Northeast United States. Number of kids saved, 967. 967. Amber Alerts are a simple thing. Snowstorms, blood drives. Be on the lookout, very residents of this town. When the gentleman escaped supposedly from uh, Pittsfield, State police showed up at the American Legion with assault rifles ready to do business because they thought the guy was either in Riley's Furniture or somewhere at the Legion. And the first thing the trooper in charge said to me is, can we put a be on the lookout on your sign right now? Did we call you, George, about that? We did. 
Okay, so you want to talk about real emergencies and safety? That's it right there. So, you know, we need to look at it uh, realistically. What good will it do for the town? I understand some people don't like it. Okay, uh, they're entitled to their opinion, as we are ours. Some concerns that I have in this whole process of getting here with the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, I was really disappointed, okay, because most of the people on that board said nothing. It was run by Julie Schroeder and John Arneson. Okay, they were the only two that spoke. Not a question from any of the other people. They sat there in silence. Not a question. Okay? And it also concerns me that Julie Schroeder and John Arneson are on the sign committee. So we have the people writing the law that are going to enforce the law. Okay? It doesn't seem very fair to me. Additionally, Sean Clay and myself have made the travels up and down the boulevard and asked all the businesses and anybody that had a building in that area if anyone from the sign committee ever approached them to talk about what do you think about signs? Nothing. So we're just getting some individuals, wills and wants on what this should be, all right? We're a service organization and we're here to serve the community, all right? Yes, I believe we should be in the exception role, okay? Mr. Artisan said, no, no, treat everybody fairly. We're a 501c3 and the money that comes in there goes right back out. So with that being said, please take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. speakers who have had a chance to speak. My name is Chris Regan. I live up on Boston Corners Road in the town. Um, I would just like to say that it's, from what I understand, I don't think there's too many people that are opposed to the sign itself, to one sign, which sounds like it's going to serve good purpose. But as I understand it, we cannot, by law, make a specific change, an exemption to the zoning in that whole area. So the question really isn't whether it's okay to have the sign there. The question is whether we want to change the zoning for the region there. And whether or not individuals that are running businesses there want to have signs like that and at the moment isn't really necessarily the only question. It's also whether or not in 10 or 15 years there are places moving in there that want to put up, they illuminate the signs. So if the comprehensive planning that's been done, uh, if, if the desire on the part of the town is not to have a neighborhood that looks that gaudy, that, you know, unclassy, then that's really the question we're asking. We're not, we're not just simply saying, is it okay for the Legion to have that sign. I think most of us would be like, if, if we could make the exemption, if we could just say yes, and that would be the only thing that happened, I don't know that a lot of us would be opposed to it. I'm not opposed to that sign. But I am opposed to the whole neighborhood necessarily changing, and I'm opposed to us looking at all the work that's been done by the community to try to understand what will look good and what should be done there, just being thrown out the window. I mean, maybe the community ought to get together and raise money for a new sign that doesn't look, that doesn't violate the code, the, the zoning code. I mean, there may be a solution otherwise, but I just want to keep us focused on it's not, it's not as simple a question as, is that sign okay? Should we be opposed to it or, or not? It's, it's a bigger question than that. Thank you. Thank you. Chase. I live up on uh, 613 Smithfield Road. Uh, I own a property up in the Adirondacks, uh, Hamilton County. And right across the street from where I own a house is uh, a significantly brighter sign than the one the Legion has. And uh, it, re it really doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm not up there all the time either. But uh, 
I guess what we're coming down here, uh, and the main reason I walked up here right now is, uh, can't you get variances on these things? I mean, isn't that why we went to the, basically went to some of these board meetings, or not just the board, whatever, is try to get a variance. Now, you can get variances for all kinds of things in towns, it seems like. I, I got a son-in-law who's on a, the board down in uh, Pauling, and they're dealing with all kinds of building variances right now. Is that wrong? Is that incorrect? Just, we're just taking this. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that's what I'm thinking of. If someone, you would just ask whether, can you get a variance? Is it a variance just for a nonprofit? Also, you're in a commercial area. You're, and most commercial businesses cannot afford these signs. They are expensive. They'll put their money into some kind of other reinvestment rather than a sign like this. <coughs> The only places that uh, the only other one in town that I know of is besides the two nonprofits is Cumberland, which you know their ch uh, their argument is on the federal level is they change prices all the time. So, anyways, I just uh, I'm I don't see how the signs that big a deal uh, as as far as aesthetics, but uh, I also you know. And I think down the road, I don't care what you do, you're, you, they will be signs here. It might take 10 years or 15, they're, going, they're coming because they're kind of the wave of the future. So you're going to deal with it eventually. document that describes the history of zoning in New York, as well as the current laws around local zoning. I have a copy and I'll leave it with the clerk in case anyone wants to read it. Here are a couple of important excerpts from this document. The state statutes which give cities, towns, and villages the power to enact local zoning laws require that zoning laws be adopted in accordance with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan should provide the backbone for the local zoning law. To understand the power to zone, one must understand the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is the culmination of a planning process that establishes the official land use policy of the community and presents goals and a vision for the future that guides official decision making. Once an actual plan is adopted, all land use regulations must be in accordance with it. This usually means that plan adoption is followed by the adoption of a series of zoning laws designed to implement the comprehensive plan. Put simply, the town must only adopt zoning ordinances that are, that are in agreement with the comprehensive plan. The revision, to the, sign, the revision to the sign law that's been presented to the town board for adoption appears to be entirely consistent with the comprehensive plan that was adopted unanimously by the town and village last year. The changes are minor and are intended only to correct issues that would hinder enforcement. It would be appropriate for the board to consider adopting this revised law once you've convinced yourself that this is the case. Would it be appropriate to change the sign law at this time to permit LED or digital signs? I would say that the answer is no. First, consider that the town adopted a new comprehensive plan only three months ago, and that the next step is to convene a zoning ordinance review committee. The committee will need to review and update the entire zoning law with the goal of implementing the recommendations of the comprehensive plan. This can't be done piecemeal. If the town were to change the types of signs permitted by the zoning law now, it would undermine the comprehensive planning process that underlies the town's authority to implement zoning. While I have a moment left on the clock, I'd like to address a few misconceptions that I've heard from people in the community recently. Some people have told me that they think the town should make an exception to permit a particular organization to operate an LED sign. The town, however, is not legally permitted to grant an exception. If you think about it, you'll probably realize that exceptions could result in all sorts of unfair outcomes. And the state recognizes this and requires that the same laws apply to everyone. Some people have told me that it's not that's just one sign and ask why it's such a big deal. 
but the town can't create zoning for one property owner or for one sign. Zoning rules apply to the entire district, and anyone in the district is allowed to operate a digital sign, and everyone has the same right. So it's important to realize that permitting LED signs could eventually result in dozens of these signs on Route 44 east of the village. Finally, a few people have told me that this is some kind of battle between the American Legion and, quote, anti-Legion people. This is entirely wrong and is a dangerous, divisive, and counterproductive way to look at the current situation. Everyone here should realize that it's entirely possible to support the American Legion and the work that they do while still voicing an opinion that zoning decisions should be based on the law and the wishes of the entire community. I haven't met any anti-Legion people. I, as well as everyone I've spoken with, supports the American Legion as an organization and has only the greatest respect for the service and sacrifice of its members. Thank you. One of the things that Bill brought up that I think is a good point is the part about piecemeal. Since we just completed the comprehensive plan, would we want to convene the zoning review as the next step rather than adopt a sign law which may need to be changed after the zoning piece is done? I mean, if you, if you don't want to do it piecemeal, the sign is a small piece. The zoning review part is the next big piece of the comprehensive plan, and maybe if we did it in linear fashion, we'd turn the temperature down on this and get a little farther. Any more speakers? If not, we have a number of I was the liberal institution for the place of myself at the end. <laughs> Sean Clay, uh live in Copay, however, I'm the uh, adjutant and the historian for the post here in town. Uh, a couple comments. Uh, first off, uh, and I think I, over the last series of months that I've had the uh, pleasure of addressing you fine folks, that the we're not asking for any special exemptions. Okay, uh, I just want to make that clear right up front. Uh, that is obviously a misconception, and I kind of thought I had successfully managed to swap that sucker down. Apparently not. Two. Um, as uh, I think I very well presented last month uh, in the document that I gave you guys, uh, personally, I, I see the Greenway Compact here as uh, a red herring. Okay? Uh, I, I think it's uh, a convenient way to try to swap things down that people don't like. Uh, I don't think that's uh, the way I read the Greenway Compact. That's not the intent. Uh, the Greenway Compact does not, again, prohibit anything does discourage, and I acknowledge that, but it does not prohibit anything, period. Um, and then even that says, in the town's own ordinance, when it comes to the Greenway Compact, uh, under uh, tw uh, Section 26-3, consistency, um, pretty much the town still retains the freedom to, of action to do what it so desires, regardless of anything that the Greenway Compact says. Um, that said, I think also last month, the Legion uh, very well presented to you guys. We can shape and constrain this, these regulations any way we want. Okay? Uh, I think we can move in forward. I, I, I do think that there is some wisdom in what Bill just said about the zoning piece. Um, and you know, let's go back and let's review. Okay, uh, you know, as I said, I live up in Koke, all right? One of the things that absolutely drives me nuts about the whole government is that a lot of times, you know, we have full-time residents and we have part-time residents, okay? And in Koke, unfortunately, I am a second-class citizen because the part-time residents completely outvote the full-time residents, okay? Um, so I am I'm very much upset about this. That said, I understand that there's a lot of interest in the communities. Um, however, you know, the full-time residents, we don't have the time necessarily to make every meeting and to voice all of our opinions, okay? We don't have the time. We're busy raising families and making money and trying to pay the damn bills, okay? Um, you know, so I, I, just, I just get this tone of almost arrogance from some people that is, I have to admit, it's kind of pissed me off tonight. Um, 
The, uh, however, that all said, and my venting complete, I think there is time and room for discussion here. I think we need to, uh, I see the bottom, um, and I think we need to take a step back. I think we need to relook at what is truly in the best interest of the town and, you know, and, and make sure that we're actually getting all the voices in play. Okay, and I, I get people's passions and, and where they want to go and what they want to do. Um, but I think, you know, taking a strategic step back here, let's reanalyze what is truly in the best interest of the town. And, you know, let's make sure that we're actually getting all the constituencies involved. Thank you. Thank you. to the request by the local American Legion Post 178 to amend or exempt the sign law for the town of Northeast to allow the organization the right to display the digital slash LED sign at their location on Route 44. Over the past several years, I have attended American Legion pancake breakfast with family and friends to offer my support to the organization, given that my father was a lifelong member of the American Legion as he was a decorated army officer serving as a parachutist on the front lines in World War II in North Africa and Italy. My sole sibling, my brother, also served in the military. Although I am supportive of the American Legion, I feel saddened by the amount of time, effort, and money this issue has taken up for the town and its officials. The town has significant issues at hand, including an empty grocery store, affordable housing, septic system infrastructure, to enhance business opportunities, among many other issues which many in the community, including many members of the American Legion, are impacted by. I would not be surprised if the cost of the town of the North, town of Northeast community in terms of time, effort, and legal fees has far exceeded the cost borne by the American Legion for the LED slash digital sign. In this day and age of technology, aren't there other forms of communication that are more effective that can be used by the American Legion so that our town officials can focus on issues that are more critical to the community in general. The town has zoning laws which everyone is subject to and despite everyone's gratitude for the service of the members of the American Legion in serving our country, why should a different standard be applied for the American Legion? What precedent does this set in the future for other possible zoning law issues that may arise by the American Legion as well as others? Twelve community volunteers participated in a most recent adoption of the comprehensive plan for the town of Northeast over the past two years with significant time and effort. The first stated strength for our town that residents surveyed in the plan on page 18 was rural character, beautiful scenery, green spaces, mountains, open spaces, extraordinary landscape. On page 20, the opportunities first mentions zoning updates creative to address rural, village, and community character and maintains open space. Based on these noted strengths and opportunities, I fail to see how a digital slash LED sign typically used in urban settings follows the community's wishes to keep the rural and village-like setting. As other commercial properties are established along the Report 4 Boulevard, particularly with a grocery store, store strip in flux, how will the community be able to control adherence to the plan's noted goals? By diverting from the plan so soon after its implementation, it questions the viability and purpose of having a comprehensive plan. What precedent does this set? As I stated earlier, I am supportive of the work of the American Legion, but I'm finding it difficult to understand the purpose that such a sign provides the organization and at what cost to the community. Most sincerely, Daniel Goldhagen of Billington, New York. We have a 
another email um, from February 11th, 2020 from Joan Binzen. Dear council members and supervisor, because I'm unable to attend the special town meeting to be held in the library annex on February 13th, I write to convey my thoughts regarding the LED slash digital sign which the American Legion has purchased and installed on their Route 44 property. As you know, the operation of such a sign is prohibited in both the 2009 and the revised sign laws. The Legion, in a comprehensive and compelling presentation, argued before the town board on January 9th 2020 that the new sign law be modified to allow their LED sign to remain and be activated on their property. The American Legion Post 178 is a historically valued, active, varied, and generous contributor to the civic well-being of our communities. No one with any real understanding of our town would dispute that. So it's difficult and even dismaying to have to disagree with the Legion's arguments for retaining the sign. In my opinion, however, it is exactly what must be done. Their arguments, however, well-researched and presented, do not address the barn door issue. Example, once allowance is made for one LED sign, the door is open for all future digital slash LED moving signs. A variance for a single case is not allowed by the law. The effect of allowing one LED slash digital sign now is to remove any legal restriction on any other such signs on the stretch of Route 44 to the Connecticut border. The visual impression advocated for the Town and Northeast Comprehensive Plan, that of a small, walkable, climate-smart community, will be weakened with each new sign. Even a single sign, the Legion's, does not fit the plan's description, and ultimately should such signs proliferate, they will give a very different character to the Route 44 entryway to the town and the village. The Legion has also argued that the sign will be used to notify the public of emergencies. My question about that is, would not a more central location better serve that purpose than a location at the far edge of the town? Respectfully, Joan Vincent. Another email communication, Thursday, February 13th, from um, Dean Nicefer of Millerton. Dear Town Board, thank you for the time and dedication you devote to the town of Northeast. Having served on boards myself, I know that what you can do at times seem like a thankless job, but I am thanking you now. I also know that it is important for you to hear from your constituents that you can best represent them and the town as a whole. I am therefore writing to express the, my views concerning the town sign law. As I understand it, there are currently, there is currently a controversy over whether to permit LED slash digital signs. Our town has a character and personality that will foster growth and economic prosperity for the long term. Our new comp comprehensive plan is designed to further that long term success and perpetuate our town's wonderful character. Although some believe that LED slash digital signs will attract some business in the short term, the long-term effects will be devastating to the long-term success and true character of the town we live in and love. Towns that have opted to adopt the glitz and glimmer of bright light signs and flashing signs have developed a character that is contra contrary to the character that we seek to sustain in our beautiful town and contrary to the spirit and goals of our comprehensive plan. That type of town is not the type of town I chose to live in when I moved here 20 years ago, and is not the type of town I want to live in going forward. Bright road signs also distract drivers, causing driver safety issues. I ask you to please preserve the quality and character of the safe town we all love by declining to permit LED slash digital signs in the town of Northeast. Sincerely, Dean Nicefer, Millerton, New York. Another email communication dated February 13, 2020 from Louise Merriman of Millerton to the town board of Northeast. I am unable to attend tonight's meeting and would like to voice my objection to changing the regulations concerning signs on the boulevard. In my opinion, a stretch of town lined with bright LED signs runs counter to the town's efforts to promote our rural, agricultural, small town feel, which is attractive to tourism, 
which in turn supports the local economy and makes the town of Northeast a wonderful place to live. Use of these signs runs counter to the goals of the town's comprehensive plan, which was completed after years of effort to understand the visions and opinions of both town and village residents. Exemptions will create a slippery slope and run the risk of allowing individual businesses or groups to feel that they are being treated differently than others. The fairest approach is to follow existing law, signed Louise Merriman of Billerton. That was the last. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if there are no more speakers, no more letters, um, I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Uh, motion to close the hearing by John Midwood, seconded by George K. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the hearing is closed. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to uh, thank everyone who has turned out to, to speak to us. We, this is pretty much a record turnout for a town board meeting. Um, and I would like just to say, because I know I speak for the rest of the board, we might well have wanted to respond to individual uh, comments that our speakers made at different points. Um, the nature of a hearing is that we are receiving your comments. Um, we'll have plenty of opportunities coming forward to, to uh, respond and comment. Um, we will be discussing where we are with the sign and uh, going forward and, and what our best route is. Um, after we've had a chance to digest this, we are still receiving comments and emails uh, and we'll continue to receive uh, them uh, in the future. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to move on to the rest of our agenda. Uh, we are getting there. Uh, I do want to thank everyone who came out again. Um, any comments from the board at this point? Sure. Um, we have, uh, I'm wait till everybody's had a chance to leave, so the rest are here. Um, to conduct that. So I would like to have a uh, 
motion from the a motion to authorize our engineer to conduct the speed study on Mitchell Mountain Road. So moved. Wow. Okay, we've got a lot of seconds. Uh, George made a motion. Lana seconded it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, and then 11B on our agenda is approval of a work plan for Climate Smart Community Task Force. As those of you who have been coming to our meetings know, this is a project which the town has embarked on. It's really our, it's a, it's a very significant project. Uh, which will enable the town to do things which are appropriate to the size of our town, but which are, uh, which, which will make a contribution to the work that is being done in the county, in the state, in the country, in the, you know, across the world to combat the effects of, of climate change. Um, I've talked a lot about the different programs that we will be uh, undertaking, we have these underway. Uh, one of the things that I have learned is that anytime you do anything with the state, the, the amount of paperwork that they ask you to generate uh, is just mind-boggling. Anyway, they've asked us to uh, complete a very uh, comprehensive work plan of what we are doing, which simply restates what we've been doing and what we will be doing. Uh, but they do ask that the town board uh, approve that work plan. Um, this is uh, something that uh, Kathy Chow and Andrew Stamen have been working on with their committee. And uh, I would like the, for a motion to approve the, uh, the work plan for our Climate Smart Task Force. So I'm moved. Motion for Ralph. Second. Second from Lana. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're getting there. Um, supervisor's report. I have one budget adjustment. Um, uh, for a change in the auditor account um, from 9,700 to 10,365. Um, a reduction in the personnel account from 1,000 to 324, and an increase in the building's CE line from 12,344 to 12,355. It's a ex expense increase of $676 minus an expense decrease of $676. I'd like a motion to approve the budget adjustment. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a special abstract dated January 28th, 2020, totaling $10,777.61, broken down as follows. The A fund, $3,000. $633.42, DB fund, $6,980.53, and payroll TNA of $163.66. Could I have a motion to accept the special abstract? So moved. Second. From George K. Seconded by Lana. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I knew there was a reason I brought my pen. <coughs> okay, I have an abstract dated December 28, 2019, totaling $9,815.57, broken down as follows. A fund, $2,621.96. B fund, $509.92. The DB fund, $6,542.69. And TNA2 escrow, $140. Any 
Can I have a motion to accept that abstract? So moved. Motion by Ralph. Second. Second by John Midwood. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Right. Is it passed? I have an abstract dated February 13th, 2020, totaling $201,627.21, broken down as follows. The A fund, $52,204.07. B fund, $1,688.17. DB fund, $54,453.04. And capital projects H1 in the amount of $93.281 and 93 cents. And I have a motion to accept the abstract. <laughs> motion by Lana. Second. Yep. Second by George. <clears throat> the voucher committee for March of 2020 um, is George K. and Ralph Fidelli. Uh, minutes have been distributed to the board of the meetings of uh, January 2nd. Um, are there any comments or corrections for the minutes of January 2nd? Uh, could I have a motion to accept the minutes of January 2nd? So moved. Motion by Ralph. Second. Second by Lana. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's approved. And we have minutes from the meeting of January 9th, which have also been distributed. Uh, are there any corrections, additions, subtractions to the, minute, the minutes of January 9th? Dale, I told you they were going to be, they were going to be good. Uh, would you like a motion to approve them? So moved. Motion by Amanda to approve the minutes of January 9th. Second. Second by John Midwood. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, we have a meeting with council. Is there anything that I know that we intend to have? meeting, I'm going to be very specific about this, I'm going to ask for, I'm going to call for a motion to go into executive session uh, for a discussion relating to proposed pending or current litigation. <clears throat> if we have nothing. The only thing I have, um, I see Catherine here, uh, the, uh, you, you have to approve a Tax certiorari right. settlement. Then we need to go into, we need to have a discussion. So we should go into the second session. Any other round? Yeah. 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 Uh, I tell you what, we could do, we could do the comment period before that so yeah. that people don't sit down. Um, and we'd be happy to do that. So we'll hold that motion in advance. Uh, are there any comments that we can take at this time? In that case, uh, I'd like to have a motion to go into executive session for the reasons that I previously mentioned. Yeah. So moved. Motion by John Edwards. Second. Second by Lana. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Ralph.